Hi, this is Scott Trout, CEO of the domestic litigation firm Cordell & Cordell. There are many life changes that can happen after divorce that make it difficult or impossible to uphold requirements of your divorce decree. The orders issued in a divorce are based on the facts presented at that time, but the circumstances used in issuing those orders can obviously change. If you feel a modification to your court orders might be necessary, Talk to us at Cordell and Cordell. Contact CordellCordell.com, 1065 East Hillsdale Boulevard, Suite 310, Foster City, California, 94404. And we'll see where, and in segment four, I have nothing. All right. So we'll see where we go. You're listening to The Brian Moot Show with Brad Nolan. What's up? I'm Brad Nolan, and it's very quiet in the studio because it's just me and Brian today. Alone, just the two of us. We can make it if we try. Just That's the two of us. Oh, yeah. You and I. You and I. Is that how it goes? Yeah, sure. I'm pretty sure. We got a great show today. Uh, we're going to talk about me breaking up with my old therapist, uh, deciding to go back into therapy. Congratulations. Um, and how to do that. And why. I think why. I think the treachery, the therapy treachery that I need to discuss um, is, is insane. We also, Brad's daughter is punking him out left and right. <laughs> has no boundaries. <laughs> Zero. <laughs> Um, but I want to talk about um, uh, m- confessions from from us, from from two dudes, about some of the girly things that we appreciate from the women in our lives, um, whether they be current ones or when you discovered it formerly. Um, because I think I got a long list. Yeah, man. You know what's funny? I've been thinking about it too, and I pulled up a list, and one of them you have with you right now that men have just men hate admitting it, but. We have owned, we're starting to own more and more. It's more socially acceptable to get the nine foot milkshake. <laughs> nine inch milkshake. The uh, blended white mocha frappuccino single shot off agato no whip. Yeah, that is insane. <laughs> I mean, it's, uh, granted, listen, I've had a couple. I stay away from because <laughs> I'm watching the cows right now. <laughs> yeah, clearly. But uh, well, as I have my Diet Dr. Pepper, <laughs> which is funny. I'll choose Diet Dr. Pepper full of chemicals that are just cutting a hole right through my <laughs> pancreas right now. But whatever. At least I'll have abs someday again. Um, but I think that's become more socially acceptable because yeah. for the longest time it was like, like as a dude, you got like hated on by grown men for putting cream and sugar in your coffee. Yes. And it was also a, like when I was younger, it, my mom would be like, you want what in your coffee? So I'm getting, now I'm getting shamed by my mother, right. my own mother. It's funny like that. I remember the first time I ordered coffee. And granted, Brad and I, well, Brad, you didn't grow up in the Pacific Northwest, but you've been there long enough. Yeah, correct. And the place I did grow up in wasn't that different. Uh, the Pacific Northwest was a town full of coffee snobs. Yeah. It is a place where I'm, I, I don't believe the latte cappuccino. I don't know this for a fact. If you know, please tweet at me, at Moot Points. I'm going to guess probably Europe invented the, the cappuccino and the latte. Yeah, so Starbucks, uh, the founder of Starbucks went off to Paris. And uh, so, oh, it's an espresso. Oh, that's cool. I'm going to take that back. Howard Schultz? Yeah. Was he the one who did it? He I just don't bought think it. it. Yeah, he bought it. It was, it was whatever beforehand. Well. Um, so it's stolen from Europe, yeah. Um, but it became, I mean, the drive through coffee, coffee booth is a, is a Northwest staple. Yeah. And some of them, there's their bikinis. Wearing yeah. bikinis. My, you know what? My mom did not believe that was real. And <laughs> They're on every corner in the Northwest. I had never been through one either. Actually, Me that's not either. That's not true. I went through one on accident, and I didn't know that that was a thing. I was on my way. I was teaching in Kent, Washington. I was teaching special ed. And I was... Really tired because those days I was working from 7.15 to 2 o'clock in a very high-intensity autism classroom. And then from there, I was going to work for the Department of Health Services, like transporting foster kids. So I was I was hurting one day, and I needed a coffee. And there was this, always this coffee booth that had like uh, – it had like a beachy scene yeah. around it, right? And it's never open in the mornings. I was always stopping at this one like kind of gritty one. And so I was like, oh, I'll just stop by that one. And I pulled up, and the chick was wearing a bikini. And I just thought it's because it was hot. Right. I, was like, oh, I didn't really get that that, was, that girl was a stripper, probably. Yeah, and then she was like, for an extra $20, this coffee will be really good. Right. Well, that's the funny thing, is that when all those places started going down for being like... <laughs> Prostitution <laughs> rings. through brothels. <laughs> um, so I, like, I remember my mom, we pulled up to... Uh, she's like, she's like, oh, that's one of those... Um, those like pasty coffee places. And I'm like, I, yeah, I think it is. She whips in. 
She pulls up to the window, and there's a woman in there with pasties over her nipples, of course. <laughs> and I already have a coffee in my hand. And she's like, put that in the cup holder. And I was like, okay, put it in the cup holder. Then we pull up, and she goes, hi, my son would like to order a coffee. <laughs> and she looks at me, and I'm sitting there, are you out of your mind? <laughs> I have a coffee in front of me. Funny. Like, I already have a coffee. And she goes, well, he really wanted another one. And so I have to order. I have to lean over and order, like, a mocha or something, a non-fat mocha. And she's like, no, no. Um, he wants a uh, a dry cappuccino. I'm like, you want one, whatever. So she gets it. I'm like, I can't believe you just did that. She's like, I'm not going to order from them. That's so creepy. <laughs> Mom, you literally just ordered from them. A, B, how weird is it for the actual barista mm-hmm. to be like, this mother's son thing oh is God. a little bit strange. I can't believe <laughs> he dragged his mom over to the Pacey place. How uncomfortable. That must be his sugar mama. I remember I was working um it was I was home for a summer from college and I was working with this logger named Randy Bradley. Like that's a that's yeah. a logger name, right? Rand. <laughs> Big Rand. Wearing, he's wearing flannel. Yeah, he had flannel. He had overalls yeah. every single day. Of course he did. Different overalls. Like he had a closet full of overalls. Because I've worked with people who have the same set of construction pants. Right. And that's what they wear every day, <laughs> right. right? Just the same exact pair right. of pants. And you don't, you're like, yeah, of course they're dirty. He wears one pair all week. It's like, yeah. why would you wash those? Yeah. This guy had a different pair every day. Like, he has got a <laughs> closet full of the same flannels and the same overalls with holes in the same exact places. So we're doing this thing where I'm helping him. He, uh, I'm, I'm like cutting up logs for him because he's, he's now turning all the scrap that, that was at this logging clear site or uh, clear cut into firewood for the winter time, right? So he picks us up. He's like, "All right, we're gonna get some coffee," and I'm like, "Oh, thank God, I could use some coffee." Yeah. And he just pulls up to this gas station called the Short Stop, right? <laughs> and I'm like, "Oh man," and I was like, "Of course, Randy Bradley's not going through a the the the, the would be would be coffee espresso." <laughs> right. So he didn't even know what espresso. He thinks espresso is a gasoline additive <laughs> right. for chainsaws. <laughs> Put it on the blade. So. I'm go up, I go up, and he pours himself just like like a 92-ounce, you know, like the stupidly, over, cartoonishly oversized yes. to-go mugs? He's got one that's got his name on it. That right? doesn't fit in any cup holder no, not, ever. But he just holds it because yeah. he doesn't care. He's just going to hold it all yeah. day. And so he's got like 200 ounces of coffee, and then I go and get like a large coffee, and I start putting hazelnut. And I start dumping hazelnut creamer, and he's like, what the hell are you doing? He's all, like, mad at me. So you're ruining the coffee. He's, I'm like, I'm not ruining the coffee. I'm putting hazelnut in here because I like it to be a little sweeter. He's like, of course you do, California boy. Like, I grew up up here. He's like, hazelnut of all of them, too. He's the only one worse would be French vanilla. He's just so America at this point. So then he starts calling me hazelnut. Like all day. He's like, hazelnuts, get over here. Like, he thinks it's a slam, which oddly sounded like a slam, calling somebody hazelnuts. Right. And like for the whole summer, every time I worked with him, he's like, uh, yeah, yeah, I-, I told him they needed somebody so for to help him stack hay, so I said, call hazelnuts. And they're like, who's that? It's like, Brian Moot from California. <laughs> like, I'm not from California, dummy. I grew up down the street from you. This is ridiculous. My dad used to have th- my uh, second second dad, not the original dad. I don't know where he is. Um, but my second dad, um, yeah, my second dad used to go. I think anyone who puts cream or sugar or anything in their coffee doesn't actually like the taste of coffee, and they should drink something else. And I was like, you know what? There's a logic there, and it's kind of valid. I mean, it's funny because it actually is 100% correct. <laughs> yeah. Nobody drinking, nobody putting cream and sugar in their coffee likes the flavor of coffee. That's why we're putting cream and sugar right. in there. And like I said, I don't know what the hell's in Dr. Pepper. I sure as hell don't know what's in those <laughs> tiny cups of French vanilla creamer or hazelnut. Right. The, for some reason, it's called creamer, but you can keep it at room temperature forever. 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 It never, it never gets old. Have, have you ever nothing. seen the, have you ever seen the, uh, it's almost alarming when you see it. There's these, uh, the creamers when they have the crust on them and it's yeah. like, you're like, oh, does it go bad? Or, like, is this just a bad batch? But you still use it. You'd grab a different one in the pile, but you're still going to use yeah, there's it. there's still, like, crusties on the top of it. Or powdered creamer. What the hell are you doing? <laughs> I promise we're going to try to get to uh, girly things that men do. Is, oh, that the, is that the whole thing? We are gonna, I, have, I, have, so I have a list of ones I want to run by you. We'll do that next. Okay. Cool. It's the Brian Moon Show with Brad Noel. Do it. Do it. Go, Brad, go. What, do you need to put buttons up? 
Yeah, I'm just... The Brian Moot Show with Brad Nolan. Here we have Brian Moot. This better not get me in trouble with my girlfriend. And Brad Nolan. No, my, my wife wants to flip the swinger switch. Just two boys without man buns. All the way through the Army, through, um, you know, JROTC in high school and sports when I was younger, I've always kind of been a girly man, kind of doing my own thing. But even in, the, like, basic training and stuff, were you, like, the girly one of all of them? No, nah, I mean, look, here's the deal. I, I just, okay, I can play the part. So when I did the Army stuff, I played the part, right? But outside of there, I'm the guy who, you know, all the army guys show up in green T-shirts to the bar, and I'm like rocking a, you know, mint-colored Lacoste polo. Right. You're like, this I'm is like, green enough, yeah, guys, right? Hey, guys. And they're like, let's g- g- give me your Bud Light. And I'm like, I'll take a blended mango margarita, please. Mm-hmm. That's that's the guy I was because I wanted my drink to taste good, and I wanted to get drunk faster. See, I think that that is a very liberating um, situation to have re- or realization to come to in your life where you realize that those things aren't girly. I think that when you're exactly. growing up, up, you, you associate them with being girly. Things like on the list, scented candles, because your mom, your mom probably had them, and you're like, my mom had them. Like that's girly mom stuff. Um, my uh, my ex wife was obsessed with scented candles. Like she introduced me to this store. This is probably the most the, the bougiest thing that I do when it comes to spending money on something that I know I do not need to spend money on is scented candles from Diptyque. Don't know if you've been to that store. Never even heard of it. Game changer. I will talk to my wife about it. It is we'll in it. very fancy malls, and it's the only store that I'll walk by at a fancy mall, which I try to avoid at all at all costs. Like I know when a mall is not my speed. When there's a Louis Vuitton store in it, that's not my mall. Yeah, <laughs> I don't need to go to that mall. Yeah. That's not a mall I want. I just go hang out in and look for stuff. Yeah, I mean, in the, in the the difference between you and me is when I see a Mac store. In a mall. I go, mm-hmm. maybe this is too fancy. Yeah. yeah that, that walks the line. Because <laughs> the way they make Mac stores look is they, they put those, they sneak them into malls that it just kind of takes everything up a notch around it. So I feel like a Mac store will will take a mall that you would love back in the day that had a Pacific Sunwear in it. Right. I, by the way, or, or that's a, the third time recently I've heard you reference Pacific Sunwear. I just and I like it. that you call it Pacific instead of Pac Sun. Sunwear instead of Pac Sun. I just feel like <laughs> when you start abbreviating stuff to make yourself sound cooler, it's just the worst. Right, but the name of the store is Pac Sun. Like, that's the brand. It's Pacific Sunwear is what it used to be. <laughs> okay. That's what it was when I was a big Pacific Sunwear guy. <laughs> that's like uh, the KFC changing their name officially to KFC instead of being Kentucky right. Fried Chicken. I hated it in the malls. I'm a creature of habit. For some reason, I get really upset by these things. But when Above the Belt changed their name to Zoomies, I was so pissed. See, I'm a Zoomies generation guy. Yeah. We're I was, just far enough apart for you to have noticed certain things well, that I wouldn't I, know. And to be fair, I'm not even sure if 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 that is what happened or if what happened was Above the Belt was a very similar store and Zoomies is a larger brand. It came in and I was like, just blew them out of the way. And oh, then maybe. One week I was at the Alderwood Mall up in Washington and I was, I was like, let's go to Above the Belt. And then the next week I was like, where the hell did it go? This is the exact same store. <laughs> <laughs> Different name. That's funny. Um, but Scented Candles, man. And the other thing, too, that I love about it, and it's so stupid, is that the names mean nothing. Like the candle names. Right. Like they'll say like, Ocean Whisper Breeze. And I'm like, what the <laughs> hell does that smell like? I lived by an ocean when I was a kid and it smells like garbage. <laughs> It smells like rotting. It smells like death. It's just funny because it'll be like delicate touches, mm-hmm. and then in small print, lavender. Right. <laughs> right. Like, oh, it smells like lavender. But yeah. they, yeah. I mean, an ocean smells like death. It is a big pool of death. There's dead animals. There's really, dead it plants. Is. It's just everything's eating and killing each other. So scented candles are one that guys can like, uh, along with big nine inch milkshake coffees with yes. fifteen words. And I've come to appreciate the scented candles that we don't light. You know, my wife has introduced me to things that just heat the candles that oh, and the smell yeah. comes. It's there's like no an oil. flame. It's an oily thing. Yeah. No, there's right. no flame. No. It's just like a hot plate that you set the candle on. And as long as the wax melts at all, the scent will come out. Interesting. Yeah. Pedicures. That's one I just started embracing. I love them. And I think that this generation of men that we're in appreciate the pedicure it used to be a thing that only i would say i i saw it first when i was younger with athletes 
like at basketball players, like uh, famous basketball players talking about and putting up a picture of getting, and it looks ridiculous seeing a picture of Michael Jordan getting his toes done. <laughs> Toe separator up. <laughs> <laughs> right. I, mean, I don't know if they're getting them painted, but <laughs> but you can't afford to have ingrown toenails and stuff. Right. I haven't had an ingrown toenail since I started getting a pedicure once every two or three months or whatever. Yeah. I'd like to do it more often. They make your feet feel clean. I, I did it today. That's, I have shiny, polished toenails. That's the only thing that I can't get behind with the pedicure is the shine. So when I go in there, mm-hmm. I say, okay, cool. I'm down for this foot rub. I'm down for not making my heels all crusty. They scrub it all with they that scrub brush. To get it all, get Sponge. it all done. I am not cool with the shiny nail polish for some reason, but and we'll get to this in a second. I've worn nail polish before. My, I'm really a matte kind of guy, so mm-hmm. I try to get him to do like a, a, a non shiny version of the clear. Yeah, I don't, well, I, today she just kind of she didn't use anything. She used like a spongy brush. Oh, so and just like polished, literally polished. Yeah, just polished yeah. the nail, and I, I was like, oh, they look shiny. I don't think mine are polishable. Um, Next, <laughs> yeah, you need to go more often. <laughs> right. That's the thing. My dad had disgusting, disgusting feet. Yeah, like just wretched and vile. His toenails were green. They were green. It was like a shade of yellow green, and they were thick, like mm-hmm. they had been growing bushes. For a good long time, they were <laughs> awful. Yeah, it just looked like they had moss on top of them. It's disgusting. And I just don't want to have toenails like that because I don't want my kids to make fun of me behind my back. <laughs> Someday I don't even have any kids. <laughs> right. I'm worried about kids that don't even exist yet, exactly. and I'm already trying to stay ahead of the curve. Um, here's here's two that I love now: bath bombs and uh, face masks. Never, I haven't done either one actually. Oh man, face masks are a game changer. I will tell you, I used to have a girlfriend who worked for Clinique, mm-hmm. and ever since then, I've almost exclusively used Clinique men's face products. See, I'm now I have jumped the shark to going all the way to. I don't even know what jump the shark means. Um, something crazy. It's a term that you. Uh, well, do you know? Just, why? I'll just tell you? you. So from Happy Days, uh-huh. uh, they're back in the show Happy Days. Boy, that's an old reference. There was an episode where. Um, Fonzie literally rides a shark and jumps the shark over something, and that's when people credit basically the end of the show. It uh-huh. went on for a long time, but they're like, "This is stupid. This How show the is hell over. Did this Fonzie is done." Get riding a shark? Like, didn't they exactly? Didn't that's they... exactly the what? point. Okay. Like, so they're like, "This show has jumped the oh, shark." Gotcha. Invented by one of the lead producers on the Howard Stern show. Interesting. Game changer on the face masks. I don't. You can find them at drugstores that are made of like charcoal. Volcanic charcoal. Uh, I'm assuming they're volcanic charcoal. I don't really know for a fact. I've got one that is supposed to exfoliate and it like stiffens up and it just makes your face feel so refreshed. I've used the Biore nose strips and it, I got into that because my girlfriend's sister works at Chanel and they have a ton of masks, like eye, eye masks and creams. And we got into it because, man. Day drinking can really punish your face. (laughs) And we would, like, you know, on a Sunday, we'd be sitting around watching movies, and we'd all just start putting masks on and, like, these under-eye patches and stuff. And you just feel like it's sucking the toxins right out of your face. And so, I don't know, maybe I can keep myself from looking 100 years old when I'm 50. Yeah, I'm I'm into the Clarisonic thing. I haven't done that uh, one. Yeah, that's amazing. Is that the the little spinning scrubby brush? It's amazing. You put a little bit of... You know, Clinique on there, just kind of rubbing a little bit and just around your face mm-hmm. right, wh- while you're letting your conditioner sit in your hair. What about bath bombs? You into bath I've bombs? I've never done. I just never done it. They just sound so cool. They do sound cool. I bet it's a. If you I'm really, a shower guy. So. If you, I'm a shower guy. Well, one, I have to have a bathtub that's big enough, otherwise I look like a baby in a bucket <laughs> <laughs> or like a sink. You know, when you see those pictures, they're like baby's first bath, and it's like a baby, and the mom's washing them in like a big ass sink. That's what I feel like I look like in a bathtub. I look like my knees are in my <laughs> face. The water never goes high enough to keep my my dong in the water, <laughs> so it just kind of comes out of the water like a sad whale who's trying, and then limps over to the edge. It's not a good look for me. What else? Quick, let's do run down the list quick. What else is on the list? All right, we are talking about breaking up with therapists, and we're talking about your kid. All right, let's therapy, do that. therapists, and kids with their no filter, and what your daughter said to you, and other things that kids have said to me and you. Let's do it. No. Brian Moot is a stand-up comedian. Brad Nolan is a stand-up dad. The Brian Moot Show with Brad Nolan. I am a pretty stand-up dad. I will have to admit that. What's up? My name is Brad, and Brian Moot is here as well. It's Forced to admit it. Um, let's 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 wrap the whole show out in the last segment with talking about what your daughter said to you and okay. you having to set boundaries. I think that's that's funnier than breaking up with your therapist. 
Um, but I want to I want to run this by you because I, I have a social work degree, so I should I should know that this is just egregious. But I can't remember because I wasn't really paying attention in graduate school, and also. When it comes to therapy, you can't really counsel yourself. You can't. It just doesn't work. Well, you I, know I, the right... I, you know, I understand that thought. I can, but I know that most people cannot. You cannot. Because <laughs> you, you get so hell-bent on what you think is right, and your <laughs> ego comes into it. You're doing it right now. <laughs> so I have a therapist that I actually really liked her. I really liked her. Her name's Pat, and she's in Atlanta. And we've talked over hey, FaceTime. Pat. Hey, Pat. A few times. And the reason that I liked her so much was because she was my marriage counselor with my ex-wife. Which was a difficult time, and she yeah. really helped you through. Oh, yeah. Well, and she was our couples counselor, too. That's yeah. how we started, was couples therapy. And I thought it was such a... To be honest, I thought it was a, a great move for me to keep her as my therapist because um, I didn't have to explain anything yep. to her. Like, I didn't have to explain why I had this insecurity or this baggage or this wall, and that sucks when you're trying to, like, getting a therapist is like dating somebody, a, you know, first date, you spend, you're going to spend $1,000 just trying to get them to know who you are, so they can effectively tell you what they think, yeah, and their observations about your life, so I didn't want to go backwards. I bet, let's talk, talk about that for a second, though, because I'm always curious with other people how they do it. You're seeing, let's say you're seeing mm-hmm. a new new therapist, which we're getting to in a second here. Let's say you're seeing a new therapist. How do you tell them the backstory? Because I usually just throw bullet points uh, out and then I go, now it's on you. You got to ask the questions. Dad, I don't know. I don't know how I would, I don't know how I would do it at this point. You know, like I have to talk about my ex-wife, all the situations that were going on with her and I, moving to Atlanta, um, divorce. Seeing somebody new, having the situation that I had where I think my ex-wife was continuing to lash out at me. And I'm approaching this from a social worker brain where I'm always trying to come up with a reason for why something happened and not that people can just be terrible. So I'd say she was lashing out at me because she was angry and finding her footing in New York. There was a lot of lying um, from her part about the state of her life. She's now got a baby with the boyfriend that she's got that she knew for like a month before getting pregnant. Um, I took a new job in, I mean, there's so much there. I took a new job in LA um, and moved across the country. And that's not even getting into, my dad went to prison. Um, Then that's been rough. He wrecked a lot of things in my family. My brother uh, is dealing with cancer. And so I feel like, that would be a hell of a story to bullet point and have it come out in any sort of way where it could, where someone could hear my current like it, like okay I'm having trouble trouble with this or that or you know I'm I'm trying not to drink because I feel like I've developed a tendency to use that as a stress mechanism to cope uh, well, what is stressing you out? Oh, great. Now we got to go back and, you know what I mean? It just yeah. seems so difficult to recap all that. Yeah, I hear you. Here's the thing that I, because I've had a few different therapists in my lifetime. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I, I don't think you can get to the root of your current issues, whatever right. they may be, without starting at the beginning. Mm-hmm. I also think that starting at the beginning is a useful exercise that you should repeat in your life over and over again. So my advice on this situation would be start with a new therapist right. and truly start from the beginning. And don't worry about what your current issues are because sure. I'm telling you that even speaking about things in the past okay. will give you perspective on the present. The other option here is a legal one, which is you call your old therapist and you say, I authorize you to share all of your findings and information with new therapists. Ah, yeah. I don't, that and that's a that. sketchy situation. Nah. I've done that once, but literally the two therapists worked in the same exact office and they were friends. If, and so that was like a thing. And one of them was a couples counselor and the other one was a personal if counselor. If my prior therapist, Pat, had been prescribing me anything, then um, it would be. But thing, there was a yeah. time where I was like dealing with some depression and she did prescribe me some depression medications and I took them for like a week and I just, my, they, my stomach and... And she said that might be a problem. Some people don't react well physiologically to those things. So my stomach was not about to have it. Um, I, th- I like I like that. 
don't be afraid to rehash all those things because I'm you're assuming that once you told the story, the backstory to one person, like, oh, you get me now, right? You've right. got the puzzle solved. Yeah, but the thing about therapy is it's not about that person getting you. Right. It's about, it's about you, you getting, getting you. Getting, yeah. And the huh. more times you can revisit the trauma from day one, mm-hmm. whatever that trauma may be, um, the, the better off you are at dealing with your well, current problems. Because believe it or not, and I know you probably know this. Every current problem has something to do with something else. Right. Right. So when you start over, and I think people should do this once a decade maybe, when you start over with the story, it becomes clearer and clearer right. to you. Maybe you, or you read it, you, you discover new things that you didn't think about or new angles or new perspectives, or maybe you're able to functionally forget about stuff. Um, <laughs> well, the real thing is that it's been intimidating me. I've been looking it up online to look for a uh because now i can start from scratch with a therapist some one that is more oriented towards men you know mm-hmm. i feel like that's where i need to be at this point i'm not married they do specialize in men's issues right like there's certain yeah and you know in your 30s and mm-hmm. transitioning into being a grown man who hopes to have kids someday versus young wild guy and trying to f- merge those two humans together but i really don't have a choice because this is where the breakup with my old therapist comes is, you know, she'd hit me up uh, a while back and said, hey, you know, I haven't heard from you in a while. Um, if you, you know, let me know if you want a FaceTime session. And here's why we're having to, br- we're going to have to break up. Is, and she didn't tell me this. I found this out on one of my, when my when ex lashed out at me a couple times. And she continued to counsel my ex-wife while talking with me but never telling me that that was a thing, which to me is a wild conflict. Because right. when you're going through a divorce, now I'm just, now whether she likes it or not as a therapist, she's being used as a double agent. Like right. She's being used as a spy. And so I felt like when, and I've been thinking about this over the course of the last few months because she hit me up a couple of times. I haven't talked to her in like four, like three or four months. And it wasn't until I realized that um, when my ex was hiding the fact that she was pregnant, but then really wanting me to keep her on my health insurance when I didn't have to, uh, my therapist was fully aware of what was going on and not and not saying anything to me, but right. continuing to let m- me be exploited. So I I just looked at her like yeah that's a dilemma that I mean, I, as who, a therapist why would you put yourself in that situation right why wouldn't you just say hey I can't listen I, I got to pick one yeah your ex husband already is uh, talking with me um, and you are clearly calling me to pump me for information also you should see through that right she's a couples therapist who has dealt with divorce there's no way that you keep seeing both people in the Unless you're a money hungry, you know what, Pat? I don't even want to say it. <laughs> because you sweet lady, you. Whoa! Uh, so, anyways, yeah. Well, it's we're over. going through the same thing right now. I'm looking for a new therapist as well. So, it's uh, it's going to be an interesting Are journey. you going to go for more of a couples one because of uh, your no. mayor? Are you going to go no, for it's a dude be for me? And then we might get couples counseling in addition. Oh, dude, you're gonna, you are going to be therapisted out. Well, I'm trying to forgive my dad. Oh, yeah, yeah that's, that's a, a long process. That's a big one. I'm still doing that. Probably fix the marriage, too. <laughs> <laughs> well, <yeah. laughs> you think that my, me and my dad fixed our stuff when we've had at lengthy conversations about his run in prison. But, no, they just end up being entertaining stories. <laughs> yeah, more than because that's a defense mechanism. Let's talk about kids. All right. You're listening to The Brian Moot Show with Brad Nolan. What's up? You might actually hear my daughter at some point on this show. I'm Brad, by the way, uh, because at some point here, maybe tomorrow, my wife is coming in to talk to Pat about how to operate when you're taking chemo and how to go through all that stuff. Um, That's a hell of a tease, man. We've got Pat back in tomorrow to talk about chemo with Nikki, who's done chemo. Yes. So we're going to get a little bit of expertise for him. And we don't really have uh, babysitter money right now, so uh, Declan will probably be in studio. That's funny. (laughs) It's for at least a segment, and then we're yeah. going to have to boot her and talk about some why we no, like. We'll we're give her- about to talk about rants about kids. <laughs> right. Here's an iPad. We'll give her a tablet. <laughs> yeah. I think the key to it all, though, I, I've realized this in the last... Man, it's funny. I think that um, my former radio show that I was on, The Bird Show, is all about personal story, like personal self-actualization. And it wasn't until... I think it's just waves of life, right. you know, where like I have a hell of a lot to talk about 
when it comes to relationships and it comes to just a self-exploration, not in a forced way. I mean, there were times when I have to force it and be like, Duh, this thing happened to me. And it did, but it's not like it life didn't affect you I already that way. know the yeah. I already know how I feel about it or how it's gonna end. But I think that's the that's the key. I remember the, I remember hearing that in psychology classes. Self actualization. <laughs> it's something you strive. It's like the top pyramid of like yeah, yeah, yeah. it's a Buddha. It's a Buddha. It's Buddha. Yeah, stuff. it's like the top of the pyramid, especially even in like Maslow's hierarchy of right. needs. It's like shelter, food, family, friend, self actualization. Now you know who you are and what your place is on the earth. Yeah, I'd like to meet somebody who knows that. No one does because as soon as you do, as soon as you think you have it all figured out in one genre or era of your life, then all of a sudden you hit another genre of your life, and you realize, like, you don't know what the hell you're talking about. Yeah, it's a pyramid scheme. The Maslow thing is a pyramid scheme. I mean, a lot of that... <laughs> literally. A lot of that early psych... <laughs> well, it is it is literally designed as a pyramid. Yes. Um, well, here's what's funny about it, is a lot of those early psychological theories are complete BS oh, that yeah. we waste time learning. I remember learning uh, from, Fro- like, Freud. We spent, like, a whole quarter on Freud in college, and... As soon as I was, I found him interesting, and then as soon as he was trying to cure his female patients with his with having sex with them, I was like, "This guy's a moron, like or I don't genius." Even, but still, this isn't right. He invented a, a whole theory to get laid. You're an a hole, like this guy. Also, that's not gonna. Some woman comes in emotionally distraught that he's diagnosing as hysteria, and he's like, "I eh, know it'll fix this." A good banging. Um, so Brad just Brad has been. You entered dad genre. Yeah. And you tweeted something today that I laughed at. I really laughed at. It was super funny because your daughter Declan is adorable, but also she knows because of her adorableness and she's smart that she really can own your ass. Well, listen, I think everybody thinks their kids are smart, right? I think mm-hmm. I think that. Um, but I've seen her interact with other kids in preschool, and I now know that she is smart. Right. When you've got, like, one kid in the corner eating paint and the other one pouring orange juice in their muffin and then whispering at you, I put my orange juice in my muffin. <laughs> you know that your daughter's going to be fine. I, I can look. I, looked at, I thought I was smart, and then I look back at, like, pictures of me <laughs> when I was in preschool and one I'm, i don't know if i ever got food completely in my mouth i think it was always <laughs> on the side of my like, i was like crusted food on the face kid and I, for some reason i went through a phase where i started doing and i thought i think i thought it was cool <laughs> doing weird hand gestures and right like they look like gang signs but i didn't know how to do cool gang signs <laughs> so at one point in time there's this picture of me and i'm staring right at the camera i gotta have my mom find this and i gotta i gotta post it but i got i'm staring at the camera and I'm I'm touching all my fingertips together like I'm Smithers like in the a Simpsons. Villain. Yeah, like a villain. <laughs> and I'm just touching them. I'm not doing anything with them. And I'm just staring at the camera. And I remember doing that. I remember thinking, this is cool. Look what I can do. <laughs> like all of my fingertips are touching and I'm staring at the camera and I look back going like, man, the teachers must have thought I was an idiot. Or just a weird. Well, and here's the thing, too. The, the problem I'm going to have with Declan and my daughter is that she's genuinely beautiful. She's beautiful. Yeah. Um, and it, it, it's upsetting. I was hoping she'd get more of me. You know what I mean? I was hoping she'd be a little bit kind of left of center as far uh-huh. as looks go. Um, but uh, she's legitimately beautiful. So when she makes a crazy funny face or go like make something that normal people would be like, that's an ugly face. Mm-hmm. Take that picture. You take the picture and then you're like, oh, oh so, so cute, cute though. Yeah, Come on. So cute. And she also does a lot of cute stuff. Like yeah. you've got videos of her just, she decides she's just going to dance. For no reason. Like, just going to dance. Yeah. Just it's does crazy. It. So the tweet I had today was, and this is, I tweeted this whilst on the toilet. Um, my daughter is now mad at me for not allowing her to hold my hand while I poop. That's So how did that even happen? Like, how conceptually how does that even happen? Yeah. So here's what happens. I get home. I'm home for lunch. I'm like, oh, sweet. I love you. And she goes, daddy. And you know, the whole thing, you know, which is a very yeah. great thing. I'm like, okay, uh, I'll be right back. I'm going to go to the bathroom. And I tell her, I'm like, I'm, I'm going to go to the bathroom. Actually, the way the conversation went went was, oh, no, I forgot. And she goes, what? I was like, I got to poop. And then I just. <laughs> I so like, you got, but you're like that open with her. Yeah, about yeah, like, we talked. Yeah, I got to yeah, poop. Yeah. So I go and I go into the bathroom. I sit down and I begin the pooping process. Um, she walks in and she goes, she, she like, she goes, hi, daddy. And I was like, oh, daddy needs privacy mm-hmm. right now. I'll be out in just a second. And she goes, but. And she just stares at like, me. Like, that's not going to happen. Staring right at me, right? right? Like, how I'm, do you not know what I want right now? Right, and I'm 
I'm in the middle of going number two here. Mm-hmm. And she goes, uh, and I was like, daddy needs privacy. And remember, don't forget, when dad says something, it immediately becomes the thing you're focused on and you do it. Right. So you leave. And she goes, she goes, mom. <laughs> She's going to tell on you yeah. right now. So she goes, who, my wife is not feeling great today. So I was like, oh, now I'm causing problems. Right. And she goes, mom, dad, I love him so much. And all he wanted to do was hold his hand while he pooped. <laughs> and I was just like, what do I, what, I, mean, I mean, what the hell do I do? Pretty adorable, but also zero boundaries. Zero. And, and it's like, it almost screams. If I was in your position or hearing the story, it almost screams not only that there's no boundaries, but that it's like a test. Yes. Like if you let me, like I don't think he'll let me do this. Oh, but I'm going to make him let me do yes. this. And if I don't, if, if he lets me hold his hand while he's pooping, I can do anything I want to this man. <laughs> because that is like the most vulnerable situation ever. Or we all need privacy doing that. <laughs> like I don't like I when I'm at my townhouse in Atlanta, I go poop on the first floor. Right. Cause the you need to be alone. The second floor is mm-hmm. the is the living room, kitchen bath, everybody you know, public, everyone in the house bathroom. Mm-hmm. The upstairs there's two bathrooms, guest room, and then there's the master bathroom. But you know where I go? Because I want to keep the business the to my I go to the basement. It's my own little dungeon down <laughs> yes. there. I can chill out. And I don't have to deal with any sort of weird. I don't even like dogs coming in and looking at me. Right, yeah, of course. But here's the here's two fun facts about this situation. One, I've never held her hand while she pooped. This is a weird thing. This is not something that she's like. It's not a learned thing, right? Right. So it's and not she like, doesn't remember you changing her diaper. So she exactly. doesn't. She doesn't know that there was that right. level of intimacy. Here's number two. When she poops, you know what she says? Bombs away. No. <laughs> It'd be funny. If okay, everybody. I need my privacy. Wow. So she's like, uh, so clear I the was, house. Yeah. I was trying to use the terms that she uses so she would understand, and she just didn't care. Like, she was just staring at me. So she knew, she knows what privacy is. She knows what she wants when she's going, but she also, that's kind of scary because then it takes the level of, I know what I want, and I know what I'm supposed, but I know what I want right now. What I want right now <laughs> yeah. is to see how far I can push this this man and there's no lack of understanding. She's, I know what those words mean. Mm-hmm. I just don't care, sir. Right. Like, I'm going to do this. <laughs> yes. Man, you're going to be in so much trouble Dude, when she's a teenager. I have no idea. And she actually can, like, whip out some sort of logical argument other than, Mom! <laughs> I want you! But she tried to, she pulled out kind of a low blow. I just love him so much, I'm going to hold his hand <laughs> poop. It's kind of a dirty move. From a child, because they already, she's well aware that love is going to put you on your heels. Right. Well, and that, by the way, that's like the third time in 20 minutes she had used the, but I just love him so much because when I come home, Mm -hmm. she's like attacking me, right? She was climbing on me. I was like, sweetie, sweetie, no, no, no. I'm trying to talk to your mom. We're trying to handle some stuff right now. Please don't climb on me. And she walks over to the, subtly, subtly, she doesn't say anything Uh when I say that. She walks to the corner of the room, sits down on a chair, and starts to cry. No. And I, Declan, what's wrong? What's wrong? I just love you so much and I wanted to climb on you. Man. I'm like, you. You got to remember this because there's going to come a day where she's like, I want the new iPhone. And then you'll say, no, but I love you so much. I want the new iPhone. <laughs> <laughs> that means nothing. <laughs> the Brian Moot Show with Brad Nolan. Geico presents, yikes, another voicemail from your roommate. Sup, roomie? Hey, a pipe burst in the basement. It's completely flooded. Anyway, I called for someone to fix it, but in the meantime, I was thinking we could finally have that indoor pool party we've always wanted. I got some cool swan floaty things already going. Could you pick up some chips on your way home? Later. The Geico Insurance Agency could help keep your personal property protected. Like if your roommate isn't the brightest pool float in the flooded basement. Visit Geico.com to see how easy it is to switch and save on renter's insurance. This is a message from the emergency stuffed crust warning system. Cheese! Little Caesars Extra Most Bestest Pizza now has three feet of cheese stuffed in the crust for just nine bucks. I repeat, it has three feet of cheese stuffed in the crust. Cheese! That concludes the message from the emergency stuffed crust warning system. Get a large Little Caesars Extra Most Bestest Pepperoni Stuffed Crust Pizza for $9. Top four national pizza chains. Extra Most Bestest Pizza versus large round one topping pepperoni pizza. Everyday standard menu prices. Three feet of cheese before cooking at participating locations plus tax. Pizza, pizza. 